Everyone, how's it going? <laughs> My name's Max. My talk today is going to be beach pollution. Um, but before I get into the major claim, I just want to start it off by telling a little story. So I live in Newport, and I live by a river mouth. And every time it rains, the water gets backed up, and it grabs all this trash that's up the spillway, and it washes out the beach. And it, de it deposits trash all along the beach in really concentrated, um, basically like patches. And I was walking the beach the other day, and uh, I found some pretty nasty stuff that just got me thinking about like what type of trash and what what harm it does to the beaches. Um, I, I found car tires, found all sorts of plastic. I mean, I found like needles, used condoms, it was bad. Um, really nasty stuff. So I just started thinking like, where, where does that trash go? And what damage does it do to our beach? And what, what hazards do it, does it pose for beachgoers? Um, mostly everything gets picked up, for, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, but what was really concerning for me was what plastic does to our beaches. So my major claim here is going to be that one-time use plastics have had a significant negative impact on SoCal beaches. And um, I'm going to support that claim with a few secondary claims. The first one being that plastic is not an environmentally friendly material to use for packaging. The second one being plastic in the ocean and on our beaches is harmful for wildlife. And third, uh, plastic is unsightly and negative for tourism in Southern California. So the first secondary claim, plastic is not environmentally friendly material to use for packaging. Um, the first point here is that plastic doesn't biodegrade easily. Um, according to an article published by Matt Ransford in Popular Science, plastics don't biodegrade like organic matter, which means they can't be converted by living organisms into useful compounds for life. Instead, they photodegrade, a process by which photons from the sun's rays pulverize the plastic polymers until they are broken into individual mo molecules. And even when they have been smashed into the tiniest uh, bits physically possible, they are still plastics. So it doesn't change the fact that there's still plastic floating in our water. And in addition, um, photodegrading still takes up to 400 years. So just to put that into perspective, there hasn't been a single plastic water bottle that's been biodegraded yet fully, or photograded, I mean. Um, and my second point here, plastic contains harmful chemicals. The most harmful of these chemicals inside plastic is BPA. Um, when plastic bottles sit in the water and in the sun, it heats up and releases these really toxic chemicals uh, into the water and in the beach. And you can pick them up by even just being in the water or being at the beach, especially in really heavy um, concentrations. There's BPA everywhere. And uh, the third point in this secondary claim is that plastic is not easily reusable. Um, contrary to popular belief, uh, not all plastic is uh, recyclable. Um, and even the plastic that they use for uh, water bottles, it, it, only 25% of it worldwide gets actually recycled. So 75% of the plastic bottles just end up in the trash or being littered somewhere. Um, so that's really the main issue is that it's only recycled 25% of the time. Uh, but my second secondary claim is plastic in the ocean is harmful for wildlife. So I think we've all seen like a picture of a seabird with like, you know, a six-pack ring around its neck or something like that, but plastic actually put, poses more of a hazard um, for ingestion rather than uh, str strangulation. Um, the first point here is that floating plastic bags look like a food source for a multitude of different species that feed on jellyfish and fish. So according to Simon Reddy, the director of the Environmental International Program, nearly one million seabirds die each year from ingesting plastic. The plastic mimics, mi mimics a food source for birds, sea, sea turtles, whales, and seahorses. And even dolphins, they're smart enough not to eat plastic, but uh, they actually get secondary ingestion because they eat prey that has plastic in their stomach. So they end up getting the same thing. Uh, it's kind of a heavy topic, right? But, um, but yeah, so it's definitely not good to ingest. Um, plastic frequently gets stuck around aquatic species' bodies and heads. Um, so that's what I was talking about, where uh, aquatic life will swim through or dive down at the plastic, and it'll get stuck around their head, um, and it'll cause strangulation or starvation. Um, and lastly, plastic is not digestible. So if consumed, the plastic can cause digestive issues for wildlife. And a recent study published in Nature Journal indicates that ingesting just 14 pieces of garbage leads to a significant increased re risk of death. Um, so that's it for sec the second secondary claim. The third one here is plastic is unsightly and negative for tourism. I think that goes without saying. No one wants to go to a beach with a bunch of plastic or tires on the beach. 
Um, no one wants to step on needles when they're walking around, that's for sure. Um, but the first, the first point here is that plastic clogs drains and spillways, causing it to deposit heavily in certain areas. So uh, Amy Bird at UCI actually did an experiment where they built a frame that was a square meter, and they took it to different beaches around Southern California, and they threw it out, and uh, in that square meter they would count the pieces of trash that they found. And uh, Newport Beach actually ranked the number one in the most polluted. In that one square meter, there are 59 pieces of trash. So that's, that was pretty crazy to me, because that's like 60, that's almost 60 pieces of trash in one square meter. So that's pretty insane. Um, second is that dirty beach, beaches discourage travelers from visiting. An example of this is Bali. Um, Bali has really polluted beaches, and it's actually sig significantly negatively impacting their tourism. Um, so they declared a state of emergency over pollution. Um, and third, trash ridden beaches pose a health hazard to beach goers. The bacteria that's on this plastic, the BPA, the chemicals, um, it, it poses a risk not only in the water, but also on the sand. Um, in my closing remarks, I think we just all need to be mindful of the amount of plastic that we just throw away unknowingly. Um, it's unrealistic to ask everyone to like stop using plastic because plastic's everywhere, right? You can't, you can't really avoid it. But the main thing here is just remembering to recycle because everything is downhill from the beach. Everything that we use washes into the water. Um, and I hope this topic kind of helped inspire some of you to recycle. But, thanks. Right, well, the proposition's clearly identified. There's a good preview. I'm not exactly sure that anybody doesn't believe that plastics are a problem uh, when it comes to pollution. I think most people would recognize that this is true. So the, the idea that there's a controversy on this, I think, is a little bit problematic. Uh, there might be controversies about what the best way to address this is or whether or not um, we are doing a sufficient job of uh, fighting against the plastic pollution that's going into the ocean, um, you know, or you know, or whether it's cost effective to do those kinds of things. It seems to me like uh, you've taken the soft target, the the easy one to get to, and that, and there's not really, like I said, a lot of dispute. There's nobody out there saying BPH is okay, no problem, you know. <laughs> So it, 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 there's a lot of it that feels like an informative speech rather than an argumentative speech. Um, I think you do a very nice job presenting it. You talk to us in a straightforward manner uh, with a great deal of confidence. You use your personal experience at the beginning of the speech to kind of draw us in, and I think that that's effective. It helps build your credibility very much. Uh, there's a good organizational structure for the supporting points. Uh, there are very smooth transitions. On the first point, there are three secondary or minor issues in that first point, and so that got a little bit confusing when you're moving to the, the second and third points. I'm going, wait a second, is that the... Those were not the points that he listed earlier. It was only clear as you finished that first point that that was all in that first point. And so that, that's just a, you know, a language thing that needs to be adjusted a little bit to fix those sorts of problems. When we do the debates, you can go ahead and use uh, like labels. You'd say sub point A, sub point B, because we're going to have a lot of arguments that are being presented. Here, it was, it's a little bit awkward to do that because it's more of a speech that we're doing as opposed to the you know, competitive kind of response and, and return that we're going to be doing in the debates. So that was a little bit awkward. But you've got good information on all of these points. I don't think there's any um, problem with it. Uh, you know, I think I could use a little bit more information about the problems with BPH, uh, you know, that it exists, that it's out there, and it's... That part is true that the, the harm that comes from it, though, is, is largely unexplained. Um, you know, you, you do start with a lot of uh, information about pollution at the beach that's not plastic-based, but you do have good explanations about the plastic-based ones. Um, uh, you know, the Bali example that you have on the third point, I'm not sure how much of that is uh, plastic pollution that is being discussed here. I, I'm not saying that it isn't, but I don't know. That's one of the things that's kind of missing there. Um, and at the end, there's a little bit of a policy argument, but it, it follow, 
excuse me, it follows from the general issue that you're talking about, the, you know, the, the problems with plastic here. So, like I said, the main issue that I have is that, you know, the controversy thing. Do you have an outline to give me? I do. Yeah. Okay, thank you.